Hey everybody, welcome back to the Linux Cast. I'm your host, Matthew Weber. I'm joined by Martin Burke. How you doing, Martin? Doing well, Matt. Yourself? I'm doing okay. This is your last episode. I'm so sad. It's gonna be it is. Good. It is. It's a, it's, it's a melancholy moment for us. You're going back to work, and that just sucks. I mean, yeah. seriously, nobody wants to go back to work. I mean, the best part about this whole pandemic thing is everybody got out of work. Um, or at least they got to stay uh, home for work. You know? Yeah, stopping out for work, unfortunately. It's just as hard. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, what have you been doing in Linux this week, Martin? Right. I've been doing our topic of this week, which is retro gaming on Linux. So I've had plenty of fun. In a zone which I'm quite comfortable being in, because I do like my um, retro games. Um, so I won't bore anyone else with that. I'll save that for the main chat. What about yourself? What have you been up to? Oh, I've been doing quite a bit of stuff. So I've been playing around with Xmonad again, uh, mostly unsuccessfully. I cannot get my head around Haskell like at all. It's just a language that I can't seem to... For whatever reason, Haskell has this weird habit of putting commas at the beginning of a line and i just don't get it i don't understand why that would be a thing <laughs> it's really weird commas don't go at the beginning of the line for any other uh language that i'm aware of so it's just really weird um i've also been playing with gnome 40 a little bit i've been trying to get it to install on an older version of ubuntu i've not been successful with that like uh yet because uh, i want to try to do a video on it but i don't think i'm going to be successful um and then Sunday I did some more scripting and I did it on my second live stream. So I did a live stream on you, a live stream, a live stream on YouTube, and it was pretty fun. So um, oh, I had cool. like five people watch it. <laughs> but you know, I was like, somebody actually watched it. it was It was amazing. Did, uh, actually, uh, DistroTube stopped by for a little while. It was kind of fun. Oh, so, sweet, um, cool. Yeah. Um, so that's what I, what I've been doing. Um, other than that, just mostly work. I mean, like writing, like crazy for my real job <laughs> it's just it's been stupid busy so anyways that's kind of what we've been doing on linux let's go ahead and jump into the contact information you, uh, you can do you can contact us via twitter at the linux cast i'm at mtwb martin's martin twit to you you can subscribe to all of our feeds and stuff for the podcast itself at the linuxcast.org um i know i've been promising an actual website and i think that's about to get done because i've been doing some research on that kind of stuff so uh, I think I'm pretty much to the point where I'm, I know where I'm going to host it. Uh, I know what I'm, how I'm going to design it and stuff. So that should be up in the next week or so. You can contact That's us cool. via an email at the linuxcast at gmail dot com, and you can support us on Patreon at patreon dot com slash linuxcast. And I'd like to thank our patrons Devon, Donnie, Maglin, Marcus, Camp, Merrick, and Mitchell. That list seems to be growing, which is good. And you can follow us on Facebook at facebook dot com slash linuxcast. I don't know why. Uh, the patrons should really should go at the end, but and make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube at youtube.com slash linuxcast where I post videos. Uh, I, at one point I could say I did it seven days a week, but I've been taking a, a day off every week now uh, just to kind oh, of... Slack in there. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> see, I'm having some mental health issues because <laughs> I get really addicted to looking at the, like the, the YouTube stats or whatever, so... That was really pulling. I mean, some days, like, you know, we had a really good day on YouTube, had like 10 new subscribers or whatever, and the next day I had like two and got really depressed about it. So I've been trying to at least take <laughs> one day a week where I just, you know, do nothing for YouTube. It's just made me feel a bit better. So, um, plus, there's always so many topics. I mean, really, I mean, I, I hate to go to like DT's channel or Brody Robertson's and just say, I'm going to steal all their, you know, topics or whatever. So it's easier if I just take a day off and try to come up with some original shit. Anyways, <laughs> language. I, yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to beat that one out. Probably, <laughs> probably won't remember. Um, sorry, kitties. I owe you a dollar in the swear jar. All right. So That's every sweet. week, Martin and I go through, and we each come up with one news link that we're interested in. Uh, Martin, what's your news link for this week? Right. I try and do one um, show related. Um, it's game related at least. There's not much retro news out. Um, so Valve's Proton 6.3-1 adds support for even more games and improves PlayStation 5 controller support. Link down below. Um, it's basically added more and more games as, as a ever doing. Um, Valve are really good with their Proton software. Um, so, I mean, we've got games like Bioshock 2 Remastered, Company of Heroes 2, um, Mass Effect 3, Rise of the Triad, 
um, Shadow Empire. There's, there's, there's plenty of new games and improvements. And it's really easy. I mean, in the last Steam sale, I, I think it was Witcher 1 and 2 I bought for a ridiculous price of something like £3. I thought, right, get down to playing this, and it didn't work. So I, I tried running it through Proton, it still didn't work. I mean, if you've got games that don't work on Steam under Linux, just do a, go to the store page, go to Discussions, and just type in Linux, and someone will tell you what version of Proton that you can use to actually enable you to play the game. It literally took seconds as I was up playing um, The Witcher, which I'm reading currently. So mm. nice and easy, that. So more and more games... Um, working on, on, on Linux, which is brilliant. I don't what? play games as much as I want to, so I don't I don't have as much experience with Proton as I probably should have. I've tried it's, a couple it, times, but... Yeah, it, it, I was a, it was a head-scratcher for me, to be fair. I'd log into the Proton site, and I'm like, well, where's this? It, it literally is in your Steam settings. You go to your settings, enable Proton, and... and you select which version of Proton for which game, and, and it'll um, automatically download patches and um, oh, I forgot the word um, graphics packs. Let's just say that um, to enable to run it on um, Linux. So uh, it is quite easy. It was just a, I just thought there's two separate things, but no, uh, Proton is actually within um, Steam once you download that. And that um, should extend your game selection. Mm. Yeah. It's far easier than Lutris anyway. And things like that. <laughs> I did actually <laughs> finally get something to work on Lutris. I finally got Hearthstone to install on Lutris. So that was pretty, oh, bonus. pretty, that was pretty exciting. I haven't tried anything else. Uh, I, I figured I'd probably better stop while I was ahead. <laughs> so um, my link this week is something that I, I mean, really, we don't need to talk a lot about this, but Arch Linux has been notorious for having a text-based installer that is basically completely unguided. You have to go through and, uh, you know, look at the Arch Wiki and get your instructions there or find a tutorial on YouTube. But in the latest ISO, they actually have a guided installer. Now, I've watched a couple videos on this, and it's not it's not the greatest guided installer ever. You're still going to have to know some things about Arch Linux in order to install, but it's I don't know if it's a step in the right direction or not, but it's definitely a step in a different direction for Arch Linux because they've been, like I said, they've just been notorious for just wanting to, you know, have every, the users do everything themselves. Whereas this is, you know, very much a guided installer, so it's kind of interesting. I haven't tried it yet, uh, but I think I probably definitely will because um, one of the things that, <laughs> especially on like a laptop, I can I've never been successful in getting Arch Linux installed on a laptop. And it's the Wi-Fi that always trips me up, like every every single time. Mm-hmm. So hopefully that this makes that easier. Is, is, I'm guessing is, that's command line install still. It is a command line install, so it's it's kind of like a. You remember those text-based adventure games in the terminal? Oh right. It's kind of yeah. like that, only you're installing Arch Linux instead. You know, and it's not fun, obviously, but. Um, <laughs> it's just as hard as an adventure game from the early 80s. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, you're not typing in directions. You're typing in which hard drive you want to install Arch Linux on, and make sure you get the right one. Otherwise, you're overwriting the wrong hard drive. You know, so uh, go well, left and go right. It makes it easier. Yeah. It's, Definitely, it's, it's a good start. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how it um it evolves over time because I mean if I mean I, I think that the regular Arch install method will always be there, but it'll be interesting to see if this gets really good if this becomes maybe the default or something in the in the future. That'd be uh, really neat because I think a lot of people are very interested in using Arch, but always get to the point of that ISO being just completely overwhelming for them because there's a, there's a few steps in the Arch install processes that are just not great. And it's not even just the Wi-Fi stuff. Like uh, formatting drives, your hard drive in the terminal is scary. <laughs> you know, unless you have like one hard drive in there, you know, it can be very worrying because if you type in the wrong SDA or SDB or whatever, you're overwriting your external hard drive and you've lost all your data. It's horrible. Um, so that can be really scary for a lot of people. I don't know that this necessarily fixes that, but maybe in the future it could. Stick to G-ported. 
Uh, <laughs> what you're going to do is you're going to stick to Linux Mint is what you're going to do. And we, we all know this. I, I'm, I'm still using it, actually. It's, it's absolute workhorse. Not a problem with it at all. <laughs> Boring. I'm just saying. No, all right. It's messing about. It works. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So our main topic this week is retro gaming on Linux. So, Martin, this was your topic. Go ahead and tell us what we're talking about. Yep. So, I mean... Retro gaming on Linux is super duper easy. I mean, you can either repurpose an old laptop or uh, even better, that Raspberry Pi that's sitting in your drawer. Now, you can um, either install Retro Pi or Emulation Station, e- Emulation Station even, um, either as a standalone image on top or on top of your e- existing Linux install. I mean, by far the easiest and... Um, easiest way is to install it on a Pi. Now that's how I, well, essentially started in Linux, was I had um, a Raspberry Pi which I got solely for retro gaming. Um, so I'd gone through all the befuddlement of um, imaging the drive, got that working on the Pi, uh, literally stuck a USB uh, joystick in, followed the instructions, I was up and running. I mean, it can be quite daunting um obviously I mean, a lot of our listeners probably have got things like this installed but this is just for the people that don't so what you have to do you have to install the actual system of choice i mean uh, emulation station or retro pi whichever one emulation station is quite good to be fair that's what i would recommend for a pi um now there's the legality in roms no, I don't know whether you know about this, do you? Like, I know Nintendo sues people all the time. Oh, the new ten- Nintendo will sue anyone. Especially when people have spent a fortune on the Wii channel and things like that, and they suddenly close it down, all those games gone. That's another thing, that's a problem with digital. So, th- there is a bone of contention, this, whether it's legal or not. But in my eyes, if I've got a dusty old... NES upstairs or a SNES in the attic uh, you can't play, play it on current um, TVs you do have to either get an upscaler or just leave it there or buy um, a, a clone console like a Retron uh, which is quite co- cool actually you can play Nintendo, SNES Mega uh, Drive, all that um, anyway I'm going through. so what you have to do I mean, in the cases of legality, I can't see the reason if you own a game as you would a music CD to then put it on a, well, MP3 or cassette (laughs) to use for yourself. I'm not on about sharing games willy-nilly. I'm on about something that you actually own um, that you can't play on the system that you'll be able to actually play on your current um, setup, whether it's a um, laptop or your PC. Now, in order to do this, you'll have to do a Google search. And I'll just use um, a random game. Um, so um, we'll go for E.T. on the Atari 2600, that famous game. So all you have to do, quick Google search, um, Atari 2600 E.T. ROM. And now you'll be able to actually download the ROM, even though the cartridge based was basically a flash card back in the day. It's just a communication device. So all the soft, all the programs wrote to that ROM. Once you actually download it, you'll have to move it in a specific directory. Now that's what can be a pain. Oh, just a word of warning. Whatever you do, don't search for full Atari 2600 or SNES ROM set because you'll obviously download the whole catalogue. So that's a word of warning to, to everyone, so don't get doing that. Right, and that's basically it. It's just getting around the... Once you do it a few times, I mean, I would advise, obviously, to watch a couple of... Um, instruction videos at where to put your ROMs once you've downloaded it but I mean some of the software I'm about to mention are, are quite good I mean 
you can use RetroArch. I've put a link below, which is just available in the store. Um, it, it can get a bit hard because you have to install a special core to play the system. So if, if you want to play a DS game that you own, you will have to um, download the core for the system, which is a main image um, software. And then you shift the ROMs into current folders. So, I mean, RetroArch can be a bit tricky, but once you get used to it, um, you'll be flying. Next one is Lutrix. That one's not too bad. <laughs> MAME, which is a good one. Um, I always used to use that on Windows, and that's also on Linux. And obviously, um, Steam for your classic Windows games, Age of Empires, Dooms, Duke Nukem's, all that. Um, I mean, the benefits of ROMs is you might be into JRPGs, which haven't been released in the UK or US, that you're <clears throat> that's translated into English. Uh, you've got the ability to save the game at any point. Some glitches may have, some games that have glitches may well be fixed. And you can also get hacked versions which basically uses the original game properties to create new levels. I mean, there's some right brilliant Super Mario levels that people have hacked, which is super duper hard. Yeah. Um, when you you can actually search for your Pi images on um, Google. So if you just type in RetroArch, um, was it RetroArch? No, sorry, it was RetroPi. And that's retropie.org.uk, and it's the first one that you come to. Whatever you do, don't go a couple of links below as they contain pirated images. I mean, it's disgraceful. I mean, I'm looking at it now. I mean, we've got full 128 gigabyte full ROM set, one terabyte full ROM set. It's basically your full image you select whichever system you want it'll play you a little video tell you all about the game and you can play the game as i said don't down go to those links and download that because it's very naughty um so what games any questions <laughs> what games have you been playing that's what i want to know I... obviously all the games that i own i have got quite a large retro game collection to all be right fair. favorite ones then uh, well, it's got to be the one that I always go to is either, uh, sorry, I'm cheating now, um, Zelda, A Link to the Past, um, and Super Mario World I love. Mm. I was quite a, a SNES fanboy, or Super NES, as you guys like to call it. Okay, see, I was too young for either of the first two Nintendo ones. I, I had them, but they came, they were like <gasps> secondhand. They came from the garage sales. My first console that I ever owned new was the, was the N64. Um, and my favorite games on that were Mario 64, Mario Kart, and Diddy Kong Racing. So if I could find oh. those to play, that would be really fun. Nintendo 64 is quite a hard one to emulate. Um, yeah, I'm not of. too sure too much on like the Pi 4 as much. They may have ironed out some glitches, but it is quite hard. But I would recommend you go on eBay, <laughs> get a copy of the original Super Mario Kart, and then download the ROM and play Super Mario Kart, the original, and you will have absol an absolute blast. I hated that blooming 64 one. There was Double Dash, wasn't there, on the GameCube as well? I, I really didn't like that. Was, uh, Super Mario um, Kart is the best kart game ever. Yeah, I see. I went from the uh, N64 to the PlayStation 1, so there was quite a skip between my generations of consoles. Uh, Gosh, and then yeah. We, yeah, and then we, pl we played the crap out of the PlayStation 1 until... And then I didn't get another console until the Xbox 360, so I kind of skipped generations all the time um and then i've ha i honestly the 360 was the last one i had so <laughs> yeah well uh, you could download your um cores on retro Pi for the playstation the, the main sony software that enables you to play the roms and i'm sure you've got your collection 
back of the closet and you'll be able to um, relive old um, battles. But it's all yeah. good fun. It's more nostalgia. I mean, I will put them on now and again and, and show mm. the kids. But, I mean, there's some absolute classics. I, I must admit, um, Atari 2600 and things like that don't even bother because they're just laughable. I mean, you've got some hidden treasures on the NES and the SNES. I've got some world-class beat-em-ups and, uh, and pixelated graphics that people are still releasing now and again on Steam that, that, that go quite high and build up a fan base. It's just a pixelated art. It's just spot on, really. Yeah, I remember a game that I played called Banjo and Kazooie. It was on the 64. Oh, yeah, 64. <laughs> Man, I missed that game. That was that was back when well, games were fun, you know. <laughs> exactly, and you didn't have to pay for your DLC. You'd well, do the, the, the different code on your controller and get your inv- inv- it's, invulnerability. Yeah, it seems like every game that comes out now is a first-person shooter, or it's a racing game, or it's like a like a, a, a mystery stealth kind of first person shooter i mean i mean really those stealth games are just turned into fps's i mean or i mean obviously then there's the sports games and sports games are still around but why do you need a new madden like every year i mean it's just it's the same thing it's just the same thing with i mean F- fifa i mean fifa comes out with a, a new one every single year all you're doing is updating the players i mean it doesn't make any sense to me that's quite interesting actually because madden you can um you've obviously got madden somewhere um with Madden, you can actually download the new um, player stats. So you can play with the new player stats and things like that um, using the original SNES game. <laughs> I know they do it with like, the ice hockey games and things like that. They just put the the new roster in and you can uh, play with your, your current players um, from when was it? Was it 93, 94, the SNES era, something like that? But yeah, it's all good fun. It's always good to go back and um, go through it. I mean, I, I would recommend the Pi, obviously, for its multitude of uses. But if you're into gaming or you, you could just have it set up as your gaming and your or your Cody station, I think Emulation Station uh, ships with Cody or automatically in there so if you've got your um if you're streaming around the house you, you your various videos and stuff you can sync cody to that and, and have that running through the pi but yeah really good super simple to do as i said there's the information's out there if you want it um but yeah really good and um that's about my bit on that yeah playstation they do playstation 2 I mean, obviously, in another 10 years, they'll be emulating PlayStation 4 and 5 yeah. and things like that. It's just <laughs> crazy how it, how it moves on. I mean, when I was using MAME, I think I was on a PlayStation 1 and playing old classics, and suddenly they're just adding the, the, the generations to it and, and going back on it. I mean, the emulation scene is crazy. I mean... They're doing um, Wii U games that are in 4K and things like that, something that Nintendo could never do, and they're just pushing the software to the limits. It's quite amazing what some of these guys are doing for the scene. Yeah, it's very interesting. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the apps of the week. Why don't you go ahead and go first, since how it's pretty much related. Right, so it's RetroArch, link below, as I'd said. Um, basically, a program sorts out um, all your games in one place, all your game systems, so you you select um, Game Boy or Nintendo DS. Well, I wouldn't recommend the DS, to be fair. Uh, GameCube, things like that. Then you'll have a selection of your ROMs that you legally own, and you just cycle through to the correct one uh, and go to that. As I said, it, it is a bit tricky, and it is a bit daunting. I mean, I had some of the guys listening have probably got RetroArch. I think I've got it on the PlayStation 3, and it was an absolute nightmare. But once you got it up and running, it was okay. Um, and that's my pick of the week. What you got for us, Matt? <laughs> uh, can this be command line? 
It is not a command line. Oh, it's not even. Oh, I know. Shocker. Ah. Well, I, 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 it's not even oh, a. The last nap, episode so. as well. Jeez, yeah, I know. I've, tur- <laughs> I've turned him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I. It's not an app. It's a podcast. So it's a. No. I'm completely cheating. I can't help it. But I discovered a new podcast. that's called Bad Voltage. It's done by uh, at least one of the guys that used to work at Canonical. His name is Stuart Language. Language. I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, but I found it highly entertaining. The um, the guys just kind of get into these really deep topics, and I've been listening through the back catalog, and like I said, it's it's kind of become one of my fa- new favorite podcasts so um you sh- i think everybody should just kind of check it out because I've, they've talked about nfts this last week they talked about um uh I, i've forgotten what they were talking about actually i can go look it's real quick they talked about um oh flock that stupid um google new tracking system for advertisings um it's called the federated legion of cohorts or something i don't know it's really weird so they talked about that and some of like i said they got really deep into it it's really really good i really enjoy it so that's my uh pick of the week it's not an app of the week but whatever i can't no i'd second that definitely it's a really good podcast as matt says he's going through the back catalog which is quite easy to do because um you could just pick up any you could just flick your um podcast app through just pick one anytime it, it it's really entertaining it, it mm-hmm. uh, and light-hearted and, yeah, and they, they do have, really have a bit have of fun you, you, yeah you, you can literally go through the back i know i've, I've went back through and i had a bit more time and i was commuting more um I, i'd always stick the guys on and, and you can just go back and pick up any podcast and just have a chuckle to yourself with them but yeah definitely thumbs up on that one yeah, I'll let one. you off. I'll let you off. Yeah, um, I could. I mean, I could come up with a uh, terminal-based application if you. I mean, if you're gonna feel bad. I mean, I, 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 no, I don't no, wanna, I'll have a podcast. I, I, I'll have a podcast. I'll let you off. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't want you to, you know, leave on a sour note. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, I could come up. I'm sure, Ranger. I could come up with something. I don't know. Oh, I could say Dragon because Dragon is the drag and drop thing, but that that turned out not to be all that great. Anyways. So that is it for your final episode. That was a pretty good one, Martin. Um, yeah. Thank, yeah, thank you for so doing this with me for the last five, six months almost. Um, no, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Matt. I've learned loads and far more than I ever would have stumbling across Linux. I mean, I've had to sit there and watch countless videos to try and get my knowledge up to some sort of level. Uh, but yeah, it's been really good. And anyone out there new to Linux, a, a veteran, um, please get in contact. Uh, and and, and it, it has been really fun. And, and I am sad to go, to be quite truthful, because I, I do like uh, chatting nerdy things with you. <laughs> well, I am sad to see you go. And if you ever, if you ever find yourself in the middle of a pandemic and not able to go out and about to work, you know where I'm at. And we'll. we'll We'll continue on, but I mean, hope, I mean that's that's a horrible thing to say, Matt. I mean, it, it is, seriously, we're, we're wishing for a pandemic just so we can continue podcasting together. Oh, that's terrible. Uh, anyways, uh, thank you, Martin. Thanks everyone for listening. No, thank uh, make you. sure you say that again, Martin. No, I said thank you. Yeah, you're welcome, and thank you for joining us. Thank everybody for watching, listening, whatever. Make sure you subscribe, like, all that stuff, and I'll see you next time. Excellent. Take care, guys. Take care.